Hello everyone. So did you know that we can now write measures, DAX measures in the Power BI service? Stay tuned to find out how. Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Dominic and today I would like to talk to you about writing DAX measures inside of the Power BI service. That's right, it's finally here. We are now able to write DAX measures and do other data modeling inside of the Power BI service, but we will need the help of Microsoft Fabric. Now, if you are just finding out about Microsoft Fabric, a little background to it, Fabric brings together experiences like data engineering, data factory, Azure data factory, data science, data warehousing, real-time analytics, and Power BI all in one place. It's a one-stop shop, a one lake, if you will. Now, we won't be getting into all of the uh, different personas and define each of the services available inside of and with the use of Microsoft Fabric. What we're going to focus on today here in this video is how can Fabric benefit the typical Power BI data analyst? So we are going to see that with the help of Fabric, we can now uh, data model inside the Power BI service and even write DAX measures. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's head over to the Power BI service. Now, in order to follow along and model out with me and write DAX measures here in the service, you will need to create a Fabric trial account in order to be able to do what I'm going to show you today. So for existing Power BI users, this is pretty easy to do. If you are already an existing user, just go ahead and enable that Fabric Preview license. So you will need to enable, excuse me, that Fabric Trial license in one of your workspaces here. Now, I already have access to a shared workspace that this has already been enabled for, and I also have access to a lake house in here that has been shared with me. If you wanna learn how to set up a lake house with Fabric, then definitely check out our Learn With The Nerds event that we just recently hosted. It's titled Microsoft Fabric Creating an End-to-End -end Solution, and I'll be sure to link that in the, vid the video in the description below. So, with access to this lake house, I have the ability now to create my own Power BI data set and write DAX here in the service. So I'm gonna go over to this AdventureWorks Lakehouse here. And before we jump into it, let's go ahead and let's talk about what exactly is a Lakehouse. So a Microsoft Fabric Lakehouse by definition is a data architecture platform for storing, managing, analyzing structured and unstructured data in a single location. So it's flexible and scalable solution it allows your organization to handle large volumes of data using a variety of tools to process and analyze the data. So we're gonna take a look at creating a new Power BI data set from this lake house. So as you can see, this is the AdventureWorks data set here, the one we all know and love. So at the top right here now, the data is already in here. We don't need to select get data. What we're gonna select here now is new Power BI data set. So I'm gonna create a new Power BI data set. There was one already in this workspace, but I don't want to mess with that one that's been created. I'm going to create a new one here. So I'm gonna go ahead here now and bring in a couple of tables. I'll bring in the uh, product dimension, my internet sales fact table, and this date dimension, and then I'll go ahead and select confirm. And it's gonna take a moment here for this data set to generate, but once it does, then we will be able to open this up here in the Power BI service, and we will be able to get into some data modeling as well as creating and writing DAX measures. All right, so as you can see, this looks a little familiar if you are used to data modeling. 
So what we can do here now with these three tables is we can kind of go in here and set up a little mini star schema. All right, so let's create that relationship here now and we'll create the relationship here on the date key and my order date key. You can see that it's already here. It's going to automatically assign the cardinality one to many and the cross filter direction as well as make this relationship active. Let's go ahead and hit confirm, that is perfect. Now we'll go ahead here as well and go in and create a relationship here from the product and the sales table there, again, automatically setting the cardinality just like it does in the desktop. So there we go, we have those relationships set up here now. Now we have our relationships in place, guess what's next? It's time now to write some DAX. So I'm gonna go ahead and select write a DAX measure here. And there you go, you see my formula bar opening up here. So we can enlarge the formula bar just like we would do inside of the Power BI desktop. Again, working similarly here inside of the Power BI service. Now, I just wanna create a simple measure here to just test this out to see that we can in fact create a new measure here now. So let's go ahead and do something very simple and straightforward. I'm gonna create a, a total sales measure that we are gonna use in our report instead of that sales amount column. So for my total sales measure, I'm gonna bring in that sum function. And for this, I want to refer to my fact table there. And I want the sales amount column, again, trying to avoid introducing any errors into the formula bar here. So there we go, total sales equals sum of the fact internet sales, sales amount column, hit enter. And then there we go, we see that new measure is there. Now we could go ahead and create a new report here now and use this measure inside of that new report. And so when we get in here now on my dates table, there it is under the product table, which is all right, we always can move that a bit later. If I bring this in, in fact, there we go, we do see that measure is working. I know that that is the total amount of our sales for all products, for all sales territory. So I know that this is now working. Now, what we can do with this is we can launch a new Power BI desktop report window. And we can go into the One Lake Data Hub and we can select Power BI data sets and connect to a Power BI data set, specifically that one we just created here, that AdventureWorks one, since we didn't rename it there. But let's go ahead, let's connect to it here and let's take a look. So why might we wanna do this? So creating this connection here to the data set here in the Power BI desktop to that data set that we created in the lake house inside of our Fabric workspace is we will now experience better performance using direct lake instead of using import or direct query. So we get the beauty of both worlds here, connecting to our data set in a way that is going to get the speed of import while getting the convenience of direct query. So again, we can connect to that data set. We can see here our data is still modeled out the way we would expect it to be. I can click and view those relationships there as well. Notice that since this is a live connection, we do not have access to that data view, but we can go here in the report view and we can begin to build out a report using the data set that we brought in from the lake house. We can also use that measure that we created there from the Power BI data set we created in the Power BI service. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a brief and quick one just to show you what you can expect and what is coming inside of the Power BI service with Microsoft Fabric. So I hope you enjoyed this video from us here at Pragmatic Works. And if you're interested in courses outside of what we offer here on YouTube, be sure to check out the link in the description below to gain access to our on-demand learning platform. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments what other videos 
are you Power BI data analysts looking for with Microsoft Fabric? So let me know what you're interested in and maybe, just maybe, I will make it one of my next videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.